Right, um, just the opening sequence of Stupid Bloody Tuesday. You're not getting a whole lot because what you've done to me. Right, the story of it. Um, it was a really simple idea and it should have set the tone of the day. That's what usually happens. If I'm having ideas, it really draws me out of myself. The chief inspector's head wasn't heavy, but it was awkward to hold, and I was getting tired of carrying it under my arm. I'd nearly gone sprawling on the bus when I tried to move it from my right to my left just as the driver braked. And then I had to leave it on the counter at the off lights just to find my money, and the assistant got all sulky when it knocked some cans over and they nearly landed on her cat. She said it had ruined her display, but six cans in a two-dimensional pyramid isn't a display, and I nearly told her. It was all starting to get to me, but soon after that I saw an old woman using a string shopping bag and had my idea. I found some string at the pound store, the scratchy brown stuff that always looks like it's half unravelled already. But it was all they had, and I wanted to try the idea out, so I bought it. I went and sat in the nearest coffee shop and had a, couple of, a cup of herbal tea. It was like smelly water, but at least you didn't have to spend ten minutes saying if you wanted stuff sprinkling on it, and do you want it frothy, and all the rest of it. Plus, it was the cheapest thing in the place, and that matters if you're me. I got my Swiss army knife out and thought about the options. There's a pointy gizmo at the back of the handle that sticks out halfway down the knife instead of at the end, and that's the one I decided to use. I rested my knuckle on the top of the head to get an idea of the spacing. Fortunately, the chief inspector was bald, so I didn't have to find a parting or buy a comb. I didn't have the funds, not with already having to get the string. I jabbed the point down just forward of the crown, but it didn't break the surface and just displaced the head, so it nearly went flying off the table, a bit like when you try to get a pee with your fork. It was quite quiet in there, and I could tell they were looking over from the counter. I was self-conscious now and getting a bit flustered. I got the chief inspector and clamped him in the crook of my elbow, took the knife inside my fist, with the point sticking out between my middle fingers, closed my eyes and just punched until I felt the resistance go. When I looked, I was pleased to see I hadn't made too much of a mess of it. The skin was a bit torn, but the puncture was clean and quite central. I'd have to be a bit more precise with the second hole to keep the load balanced, so I sat the head back on the table and stood up to get an overview. A nervous-looking young boy, he can't have been 18, was coming over. I knew I was sweating and I'd been a bit active, but I wasn't near anyone, so I didn't see what the problem was. Excuse me, sir. What? I'm going to have to ask you to take that outside. We, we do have a sign on the door. I was about to get snitty with him and raise my finger for a bit of general pointing when I saw the cigarette in my hand. I couldn't remember taking it out, but I'm like that when I get stressed. It's an instinctive thing. At least I haven't lit it. I put it away and I think I said sorry, but I couldn't swear to it. The important thing now was to do the other hole and get out of there. I don't like being embarrassed, especially if it's my own fault. I had to do a sort of twisting and pushing motion for the second hole, keeping to one spot, and it took ages. By the time it popped through, my palm was rubbed really raw, and all I could think was how the string handle could chafe against it later. I'd just have to use the other hand, which was a slight drag, because I naturally favour this one. But worse things happen at sea, don't they? Next problem, of course, how to thread the string. I knew there was a bit of a gap just below the skull, like there is between the ice and the water in the frozen canal. So I needed to feed it through there and out the other hole, probably a couple or three times for strength. I tipped the head upside down over my empty tea mug, but there wasn't any old fluid to run out, so that was good. Now I needed a bit of wire. I didn't think they'd have one here, and I didn't want to talk to them again after the Siggy incident. So I went over to the nearby charity shop. They know me there, because I go in and chat about charity whenever I'm in the area, and sure enough, they let me have an old metal coat hanger as soon as I asked. I was going to sit in the precinct, but it was lunchtime and the school kids would be out and taking up all the benches. It looked like it was going to be the library, as long as that bitch Mrs Pearson wasn't on the counter. She's so unforgiving. She hasn't ever barred me, but she's got a long memory. And I can tell she's evil, so I stay away from her as much as I can. Anyway, she wasn't there, so that was good. They made it all bright and open now, so it's hard to hide yourself away. But there's one chair at the end of the romance section that's hidden by the rack with all the council's leaflets on it. And it was empty. The day was definitely looking up. It got better too. If you look behind those racks, they have two big struts holding them together. And I could use those a bit like an anvil to bend the coat hanger. So it was like a curvy needle with an eye at one end. I nearly locked a load of pamphlets over, which would have caused a load of grief. But in the end, I got my finger around the front and held them until the unit stopped wobbling. I had to squash the needle's eye quite a bit to get it to go into the hole at the back. Then I found out the hole at the front was smaller than the one at the back, so I had to pull it out again and squash it again with my heel. That wasn't nice. There was something slippery caught on the end of the wire and it got stuck on my shoe. I picked it off with the corner of the Louise back shoe. 
By the time I'd finished, it was past two o'clock, but the weather was holding up, so I decided to go ahead with my original plan and sauntered towards the castle. It's amazing how being able to carry an item easily can buck up your mood. I was almost swinging the chief inspector, like Julie Andrews, with her suitcase when she's going on about having confidence in the sound of music. I wasn't, of course, out of respect, but that's how I felt inside. It sets the day up, you see, when a thing goes right like that. Well, it's not even that it goes right, it's that I make it go right. And I am in a situation, something that usually tells me what to do, and I turn it around and make things work for me. Does that make sense? I hope so. When I have done that, when I make things come right, I get the urge to share this ability with everybody and everything. It's because, partly because I know it won't last forever. 